Norbury Wharf is a boat yard that has a wealth of skills that keep boats in tip-top condition. But Managing Director David Ray knows that there are times when specialists are required and replacing part of a wooden bottom on an historic working boat is one of them. Ibex was built by Yarwoods for Fellows Morton and Clayton in 1926 and like many of its era it had top sides of steel with thick planks of elm forming the bottom. Something you can't do these days as there is no elm in the UK. Many were re-bottomed in steel but Ibex is in original condition. David owned the vessel for several years and sold it recently and the new owner wants everything in tip-top condition to ensure a long-term future for Ibex. And that means replacing the bottom boards from the mast forward to the bow. And the specialist skills to do that are in short supply. But David's had years of experience with historic boats and immediately knew that the experts he needed on this job were Aid Polglaze and Andy Cox, who've run a specialist wooden boat business, AP Boat Building at Elvercote, for eight years. And Aid's been working on wooden boats for much longer. For most people, the task of precision cutting massive three-inch planks of the African hardwood or pepe so that they can be lifted and bolted in place using the simplest tools and yet fit together so precisely even water can't pass through the joints would be more than daunting. For a pole glaze, it's simple. He told me, we mend wooden boats, it's as simple as that. It's important not to have any gaps it comes down to making everything fit. Well, in a sense, if you have the years of experience and the skills with wooden tools of Aid and Andy, it is simple because they see it as straightforward. Aid insists that it does come down to that sort of simplicity. You have to get the shape right or it won't fit. You have to do everything in the right order. He explained that you've got boards of varying width. You've also got various obstacles in the boat, like bolt holes, which are fixed, and knee positions which are fixed. So you end up with a number of seams where the boards meet, and those seams have got to avoid all those obstacles. Apart from that, you keep the boards as wide as possible, and you make sure they have a tight fit. Measure it properly and it's only straight lines really, according to Aid. In reality, of course, it's a complex job made easier by experience and craftsmanship. And even Aid admits that every job is different and throws up challenges, some of which even they haven't met before. The process of replacing the boards starts at either end of the open space in the bottom of Ibex, with Aid fitting a relatively small triangle of wood into the metal shoe at the very point of the vessel, and Andy using jacks, blocks and stands to raise one of the largest boards, nearly seven feet across and three feet wide, to fit snugly against the existing boards, which were replaced a few years back. It means they can both work at different ends without falling over each other. The ease with which these two men manoeuvre such massive weights with such precision, working in a space half a man's height on the cold stone of a dry dock in winter, has to be seen to be appreciated. Aid says there has to be a certain amount of cockiness diving into a job like this, because inevitably they'll come across stuff that they haven't had to deal with before. But he says you need the confidence to get on and sort it out. We've done a lot of them and we've seen most of the problems, he adds. Once the boards are together, they meet over the vast majority of their three inch thickness. But according to Aid, that's fairly easy because they're straight lines. A 
A wooden bottom on a steel boat means there's always an interface between wood and metal and wherever the boards meet steel, some sort of barrier is needed. Between the boards and the steel strip, which holds the bolts, that in turn hold the boards up, that barrier is a coarse cloth impregnated with bitumen. On the bolts themselves, which go through the boards, it's a curious orange putty with oakum wrapped around the bolt shaft. Once all the boards are in place, Aid says that corking is the key part of the process. He says there's a leading edge on every board and that leaves space to put the corking on. That hardens up the whole structure and makes everything tight. In fact, it is a key to the process and Aid and Andy have hammered oakum into every joint on the base of Ibex, including the older boards. It puts an awful lot of strength into the boat, he says. Aid says the new bottom, if you've tied the seams first and put the oakum in properly, should be good for at least 10 years, and then you'll just be topping up the oakum. The pair have also corked the entire length of Ibex on both sides, where the steel sides meet the wooden bottom boards. Aid told us the boat's nearly a hundred years old, so the knocks over the years and the riveting means the lines are never exactly straight. When you hammer in some oakum, the linseed oil in the oakum mixes with the tar to make everything more watertight. Once the outside edge of the boards are levelled up with some judicious smoothing, the shoe plates, lengths of right-angled metal, are placed around them to give some protection from the grinding of shallow canals and the bumps of everyday use. Aidan and Andy do a lot of work on museum and historic boats, many of them cared for by the Canal and River Trust, as well as private owners. And they've approached their work on Ibex in the same way as they would any historic boat. There's nothing we've done on Ibex, Aid says, that we wouldn't do to a museum boat. Even after watching the pair of them using skills more than a century old and doing so with a level of precision to make any modern engineer envious, Aid still insists it's a very simple process at the end of the day. Although well, no, he does admit if you don't go through all those preparatory steps it doesn't last as long as it might. And that's the odd thing really. Back in the day of fleets of boats like Ibex, the canal companies also had large teams of experts like Aidan and Andy to maintain them. So they were only really concerned with keeping the vessels floating and carrying goods. Repairs like this probably wouldn't have been done with as much care or attention to detail. A quick fix was often more important when you knew your team of workers could come back and fix it again a few months later. Canal companies were notoriously bad at looking after their boat crews and would only take a boat in repair into repair if absolutely necessary. Today we're left with a few hundred historical boats and it's only the skills of craftsmen like Aidan and Andy that ensure we'll still have Ibex and others like her in the decades to come.